Good morning, church. We've been working, working through a series of messages that uh, we were calling Sound Advice. So we're talking through some of the songs of Scripture and the, and the impact that specifically that music has on our lives as human beings is uh, unique. Uh, we're being affected every day by the, the tunes of, of life. And so we're taking a look at the important tunes of Scripture. And this morning we're going to turn to another in the book of Psalms. But I wonder as we, as we start this morning, if you're awake yet still, uh, if you remember a song that if you grew up in uh, children's church or kids camp, there's a chance you sang uh, this song like I did. And it goes like this. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Now, if you were a kid singing that song, chances are you just sang it until you couldn't stand any longer because we used to stand up and sit down and one side of the room would stand up and sit down and then the other side would stand up and sit down and things got crazy and we were just singing words. But little did we know, we were actually getting our first Hebrew lessons by singing the song, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Did you know that? Did you know that you were learning, that before Duolingo, that app that you can learn another language, before that uh, ever existed, way back in the 50s, we, not me, you were learning Hebrew by singing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Maybe you'll find this interesting this morning. The Hebrew word for praise is halal, where we get hallelujah. And the Hebrew word for God, one of his names, Yahweh, is also Yah in scripture. So the imperative verb to praise is, to praise the Lord is hallelujah. So as we are singing, we are singing that song in Hebrew, we're saying praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And it's an imperative verb. Verb. It's an important distinguishing uh, characteristic of the word hallelujah. It is telling us, it is reminding creation, reminding us as we even say it to praise the Lord. So the song from many of our childhoods is a reception of our first Hebrew lesson. And the song, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, follows a common theme in music. It is, yes, a call and response. As we say, Hallelujah, 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 often it's the other part of the audience, the other part of the, the group singing along that says the response. Praise the Lord, repeating what we're saying in Hebrew. But also, there's a, a building up that happens in the song. Ezra, can you help me out with the ringing happening here? Can you guys hear that in the back? I'm getting some feedback right here. Thank you. If you know music theory, if you've followed along with uh, following the themes of music, you're very familiar with a specific word in music. It's called crescendo. It's a building upon that happens within themes of musical, music. There's a, a gradual increase that we talk about when we talk about the word crescendo. Sometimes it's a, a, an increase in volume, sometimes tempo or intensity and excitement. As, help me out, um, it's still it killing me. It's turning me off on the monitors, maybe. You already did? Something's unmuted. Thank you. Hi, everybody. A crescendo in music is used to help us uh, un understand the importance of building. There you got it, as often used to create a sense of suspense or excitement within a piece of music. Perhaps it, it would help us to have a visual of how we understand. There, there, there's a, a, a likening of this crescendo in our life, and uh, I, I want to present to you this crescendo of life in a visual illustration in what is perhaps uh, the world's most terrifying children's toy. Hang in there. 
Do you know this toy? Instead of suggesting to you that you merely spend some time on YouTube this afternoon searching for babies scared by Jack in the Box, let me tell you something. You should spend some time this afternoon searching that because you will be well, well entertained. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm a little bit warped. We've talked about this before, that one of my favorite things to do is scare my own kids and or my coworkers. And, and if you were scared, if you are anxious right now that I have one of these in this room, you had a good childhood. Let's just be honest, right? If you are anxious, if you, something in you is right now like wondering, where is it in the crank position? How is this thing holding together? If you're nervous at all, if you have sweat on your brow right now, you had an excellent Child, do you remember this toy? Do you remember the importance of this? Do you remember that this taught you how to live life in a good way? Do you remember this sound? In first service, it suddenly felt like I was on a horror movie. I apologize for that. <laughs> if there's something else happening inside, I apologize for that part. But just allow the crescendo to build... How many of you, it's going to bother you when I do this? <laughs> it's okay. Hang in there. Do you know the term crescendo? Th this morning, I, I want us to have that illustration. A as we look here at Psalm 148, uh, 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 of the building blocks of, uh, of our understanding of uh, uh, of lyric and, and music, something within this text, something within Psalm 148 does this for me, Th this building upon, this reminder. So listen to Psalm 148 and have in your heart and your mind this theme of crescendo, of gradually increasing to a culmination point. Psalm 148, God's word says this. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him from the skies, praise him all his angels, praise him all the armies of heaven, praise him sun and moon, praise him all you twinkling stars, praise him skies above, praise him vapors high above the clouds, let every created thing give praise to the Lord, for he issued his command and they came into being, he set them in place forever and ever, his decree will never be revoked. Verse 7. Praise the Lord from the earth, you creatures of the ocean depths, fire and hail, snow and clouds, wind and weather that obey him, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all livestock, small scurrying animals and birds, kings of the earth and all people, rulers and judges of the earth, young men and young women, old men and children. Let them all praise the name of the Lord, for his name is very great. His glory towers over the earth. And heaven, he has made his people strong, honoring the faithful ones, the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Will you bow with me quickly? We praise you, Lord. You alone are worthy. We challenge our hearts again, I pray. We thank you for your living word. Amen. Can you hear? Am I off? Can you hear the crescendo building here? Can you hear the building blocks of this poetic license, this intentional building of a reason for giving praise to the Lord, the reason to and the importance of singing our, our praise to the Lord? It's interesting to note as we study this Psalm 148, where it falls in the uh, time frame of the Psalms, where it is in the book of the Psalms. It's part of the, the last five Psalms. It's third from the last, but it falls right in the middle of these final five, five Psalms that give this similar cadence, this beginning and ending with this attitude of praise the Lord, this hallelujah word. 
And although this psalm, along with the last five, each begin and end with this phrasing of hallelujah, this intentional reminder of beginning and ending with praise, there is something in 148, Psalm 148, that gives two categories. The, the psalmist is intentional to, uh, to delineate these two different categories of things that are to praise the Lord. The first realm, the first category, distinguishing that the psalmist identifies is praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Look again at the first verse of Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him from the skies. The location of the praise here in the beginning part of Psalm 148 is intentional to refer back to the location mysterious as it is that is high above. The Hebrew, again, from the heavens, from the skies, is literally translated as from the heights, from from the heavenly, the elevated places. This in the Hebrew, the original language is the same heaven that is included in the first verse of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. This same word for heavens here in the Hebrew says in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning it's God who created the heavens. And the earth. The psalmist is saying, from the celestial, from the up there, from the visible heavens, from the location above, from the mysterious unknown dwelling place of God, from the unseen. Then the psalmist goes on to address the bodies within, the characteristics of the inhabitants of the heavens, that space. Verse 2, the psalmist says, praise him, all his angels, praise him, all the armies of heaven. Verse 3, praise him, sun and moon, praise him, twinkling stars. Verse 4, praise him, skies above. This is where we get that highest of heights, the, the heavens of heaven. Praise him, waters above the heavens. Again, I see this as a crescendo, a building up for a purpose. It's, it's as if the psalmist is building a case for each And all of these created heavenly elements, these aspects of the glorious, to praise the Creator. From the angels to the sun and moon and stars. From the waters of the heavenly skies. The highest of heights. All of it, each piece, the whole, the complete, every single thing is reminded to. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Remember again, it's the psalmist who poetically, yet intentionally, hear it again from the message paraphrase this morning. Psalm 148, these first five verses. Praise God from heaven. Praise him from the mountaintops. Praise him, all his angels, all you, his warriors. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, you morning stars. Praise him, high heaven. Praise him, heavenly rain clouds. Praise, oh, let them praise the name of God. And it's in the very next Verse, the very next stanza of this poem, this song from heaven that answers both the why and perhaps for us this morning the question, what does this mean for me? Psalm 148, look at verses 5 and 6. Let every created thing give praise to the Lord for he issued his command. And they came into being. He set them in place forever and ever. His decree will never be revoked. If this is more than a psalm, if this is more than a checkbox in our yearly reading, if this is more than something to be read, heard, repeated, Then we ask ourselves the question, why is every created heavenly realm thing to give praise to the Lord? And let's be honest here at the onset, at at this part of our conversation, let's be honest that only we as humans, as we're about to reveal it, only we as mere humans would ask such a theme. Why should every created heavenly realm give praise to the Lord? The answer Because the creator issued his command and they came into being. The God of all creation spoke the word 
and galaxies. Far too marvelous for words, far too difficult for our human understanding, far too complex and out there, far too marvelous for our comprehension came into existence because the Creator spoke the word. Another psalm, Psalm 33, verse 6, reminds us this way in this same pattern of understanding. Verse 6 of Psalm 33, the Lord merely spoke and the heavens were created. He breathed the word and all the stars were born. Oh, that you and I, again, this day, would be overwhelmed at the power of the breath, the word of God, our creator. Let's make it practical a little bit. For me to create something, to do even a, a, a minuscule task, takes a lot of effort. I'm not very poetic. I'm not very creative. I'm not the most handy but I love to try to be creative. I, I love to try to create. I love to try to make something out of nothing. I know in my attempts at creating something, I know the effort it will take. I, I know some of the efforts required. I know the brain power. I, I, I know that I will have to set time apart to try to learn a new task, I continue that mindset, to, to teach that task or that creative thing to someone else, my, my next of kin, my, my kids. I, I know the effort of teaching them to be creative. I, I love being taught by my kids now how to be creative and do new things. For me... To try to be creative takes a lot of effort. The marvelous, overwhelming, inexplainable, jaw-dropping creation of the heavens. They declare praise to the Lord. Why? Because he breathed them into existence. At his word. At his mere word, they came to be. The crescendo of the song continues. It's on an upward build. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Then the psalmist continues. Verse 7, praise the Lord from the earth. From the earth. Again, the same Hebrew word from Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This second part of creation, this earthly realm, this second location. What on this earth is to hallelujah? What, what on this earth is to praise the Lord? Who? What is to praise the Lord from this realm? The psalmist says, you creatures of the ocean depths. If you want a fun rabbit trail, go down that rabbit trail in the Hebrew. The King James Version of the Bible translates this word as dragons. How fun is that? Elsewhere, it's sea monsters, creatures of the ocean depths. My, my you, Pastor Stevens translation of, of this, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, you river monsters. Hallelujah, Nessie. Hallelujah, Jaws. These mysterious, dangerous creations of the depths. The songwriter, the psalmist continues to build out this earthly realm list of these creations who are to call out praise to the Lord. The earthly list continues fire and hail, snow and clouds, wind and weather, mountains and hills, fruit trees and cedars, wild animals and livestock, even the squirrels and crows. And then it's in verse 11 that humanity, us, get included in the call to praise, the imperative verb, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, you kings of the earth, rulers and judges. Hallelujah, men, women, children, young and old. Let all of them praise the name of the Lord. All the people, all the earthly realm, all the spectrum, the entire spectrum, the educated and the rich, the poor and lowly, the, let them all, let them all praise the name of the Lord. All the people of earth, all the creatures of earth, all the earth-related things, uh, the wind, the mountains, the animals, every man, woman, and child, hallelujah from the earth. Why? 
Verse 13. Let them all, all the creatures of earth, let them all praise the name of the Lord, for his name is very great. His glory towers over the earth and heaven. The new International Version, the NIV translation says, Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. Hallelujah, all the earth. Why? Much like his very breath, his word creates from nothing. The simple truth is the creator's name. Who he is, is to be praised. His glory, his character, his essence towers. It is far above anything else on this earth, anything else created in the heavens. As we live and breathe here in our culture and our understanding, as we interpret scripture and look here back at the Old Testament and New Testament, as we study God's word, it's important for us to recognize that these beautiful passages were not written in 2023. These beautiful passages were not written with our current cultural understanding. It's important for us to recognize and understand that throughout the Bible, things like name matter in a different way, perhaps, than our culture understands or emphasizes. In the Bible and throughout biblical time, the The name of a person reflects not only the who in the cast of characters that is being described, but also the very nature and character, the innermost parts of the one who bore the name. Moses, in his interaction with God, we referenced it just a couple weeks ago. His interaction with God in the burning bush is one of those places that we see this truth vividly expressed here in Exodus chapter 3. we got to look at it this morning. Exodus 3, verse 13 through 15. Moses is protesting with a bush. The voice of the Lord speaking through this bush. Moses protests. If I go to the people of Israel and tell them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they will ask me, what's his name? And what should I tell them? God replied to Moses, I am who I am, Moses. I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. Say this to the people of Israel. Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. Moses, this is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. Do you sense again the crescendo even in this interaction? Remember what's taking place here. God's saying to Moses, Moses, I want you to go to my people. I want you to lead them out of captivity. This is a huge calling I'm laying upon you. And Moses says, who do I tell them sent me? Moses is saying, by by what proof will they know that I'm qualified to lead them? Moses is saying, Lord, you know your people. They're going to want to know who it is that I talk to. God's response, the apex here, God's response, I am who I am. It's fun if you do the study. The word pronounced by this guy in Hebrew that God utters here, recorded for us in Exodus chapter 3, the word I I am is the word haya. Haya, haya, God says. You want to say it. Say it. Haya, haya. I am who I am, Moses. God is saying here, who gives you the authority? I am. My name. I am who I am. I am the one who breathes Existence into existence. You know me. Who calls you, Moses? If they have the audacity to ask you, Moses, tell them, I am who I am. Who's speaking to you, Moses? I am. The great I am. I am the one who was. 
I am the one who is. I am the one who always will be Moses. If they have the audacity to question your countenance, remind them who I am. Tell them I am. Hallelujah. 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 Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Remember this? Sorry, Jason. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord, angels, angelic warriors, sun, moon, stars, all the celestial bodies. Praise the Lord from the earth. The crescendo is building. Praise the Lord, sea monsters, cattle, and wild animals. Praise the Lord, each and every man, woman, and child. Why? We know. Emily jumped. That was awesome. We know the why. The psalmist is saying, you know why. I think you know. The crescendo has reached its apex. We know why we are to hallelujah, because he is. The I am is. He is Yahweh. He is creator. He breathes existence into existence. He is. He was. He will always be. There is none greater. He is worthy of our praise. Church, listen to this reminder, warning from the book of Hebrews. As we know the truth, we know the truth of who he is. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Be careful, brothers and sisters. Make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving, turning you away from the living God. We must warn each other every day. While it is still today, while the life crescendo is building, so that none of you will be deceived by sin and hardened against God. For if we are faithful to the end, Trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. There is a crescendo building. We, as God's people, we know how the crescendo reaches its apex. We know the truth. Yahweh, the Lord our God, is righteous. The I am is holy. Yahweh's path is righteous and true. His breath, his word, what he says about you and me is right. He changes not. And there is none greater. So, hallelujah. Praise you, the Lord. Praise the Lord in the good. Praise the Lord in the bad. Praise the Lord when the sun is shining. Praise the Lord when the water's rising. Praise the Lord when you feel like it. Praise the Lord when the music's good. Praise the Lord 
when you don't feel like it. When you don't like the tune. When it's dark outside. When there's nothing in the bank account. When the progress report isn't great. When you don't know what else to do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, whose very breath breathes existence into existence. Praise the Lord, whose name is Haya. He is, he was, and will always be. Will you stand with me? You know the tune. <laughs> this is going to look great on YouTube. Someone's going to pull this out of context and this church is going to get shut. We know the apex of the crescendo. We know who the great I am is. We know the why. Let's be about the how. Let's bow our heads. Holy God, you are the only thing worthy of our praise. overwhelmingly humbling, Lord, to know that the God of all things, the creator of all things, the I am, Yahweh, that you choose to dwell in us through your spirit, that you choose to speak to hearts like ours, that you choose to meet with us in this way, that you choose to pour out your mercy and grace upon the likes of us, it is overwhelming, Lord. We are so thankful. So we join with all creation in the hallelujah. We join with all creatures of God and King. And singing, praise the Lord. Would you go with us from this place, Lord, remind us of your proximity to us. Speak continually, guide. We pray these things in Jesus' name. you hear this benediction. Now may your rising soul survey the mercies of your God. May you be lost in wonder, love, and praise so that through every period of your life, his goodness you will pursue until our Lord comes again. Amen. Church, Continue to sing it loud. Declare the praises of our Lord and our God. God bless you.